and it's called, and the corner has been psychedelicized. You'll recognize the name, sir. The corner is where we grew up at Vernon Junction, Southwest Detroit, and everything that happened happened off that corner, didn't it, yeah? If it was happening, it sprung off the corner. Started in, whatever, on that corner. We hung out there, the floods of us on that corner before cops would have to for hanging on the corner because they knew we were all right. You know, we were all right. Jack came home from the service. He's been stationed in Germany. On his first night back, quite naturally, we met up on the corner. We heard about German food, German women, and beer drinkers that could hang with us rare. But we also heard about grass and how Jack could get it so easy. Everywhere servicemen went, someone had grass to sell them, among other things. We also heard about what was happening here in our own backyard in California, of course, San Francisco. There was something going on, like a whole different culture developing. Jack brought some very strange music back with him, ironically, from our West Coast, through Germany, and back to us on the corner. Stranger yet, this first bit we heard was a fusion of our Motown. You just keep me hanging up, that we love so much in this new, more electronic stuff. But it sounded good, real good, with a little buzz. Vanilla Fudge, a weird name, even. We were used to something like the Four Tops, the Temptations, the Court Took, the Contours, but Vanilla Fudge, man, you knew something was happening. I mean, the name alone, Jesus. It was a big part of what was going on, this cool new music, but just a part. You could sense this very different attitude like nothing before, and it was ours. I mean, us young folks. Then, the falsely romanticized, terribly damaging, unbeknownst then to us. Mind altering stuff came right behind it. Grass, hash, mescaline, acid, THC, speed, and coke for openers. Like molten lava, it just came, kind of oozing into the neighborhood, in all the neighborhoods, slowly, but so very fucking surely. And it made your hair grow and your mustache droop and your clothes way more casual, like jeans and sandals and the tie dyed t shirts far out. We began to speak differently and about different things like peace and love and the kind of shit that would previously got your ass kicked on burner. Because you'd be sounding gay. We started gathering in larger and larger tribes all over the country to hear our new music, practice free love and drink, lots of very cheap fucking wine, and where we could get high with little or no hassle. There was this huge sense of community going on everywhere you went, except maybe parts of down south. But like old Dixie, it eventually fell too. I do remember though traveling through Macon, Georgia once with Donnie, where this fella at a gas station who could have sartoriously, sartorially and their suit would fit right in with most of us walked around and around my friend and I so curiously, as if at the zoo, before he most profoundly queried, Y'all making hippies? That's exactly what he said. At home, people were even flashing peace signs to one another. On the fucking highway, Burner Highway, Little Dave, Little Dave, the hood, was flashing peace signs when months before he'd been flashing his switchblade at anybody that fucked with him or anyone that his five foot five self felt like messing with. And he traded his shark skin, shark skin pants and silk shirts in for Levi's and a t shirt. And his buzz cut was now a foot and a half long. And he had a ridiculous must mustache. What the fuck? Our souls have been psychedelic size and we liked it. You saw the transition, didn't you? <laughs> so that led up to uh, a bunch of us thumbing to uh, Woodstock. Danny Brooks, that you know, Tim, uh, and uh, yeah, I know us a little bit. <laughs> yeah, that's what brought it up. I was uh, looking at some stuff on Yahoo that kept reminiscing about the old days. And I thumbed up over there to Woodstock back in those days with some friends of mine with uh, Danny Brooks, Jimmy Hill, and Al Forgas. Here we go. We started filming to Woodstock on Trouble, near Warren Avenue, me, Danny, Jimmy, and Al with maybe 25 bucks among us. The money didn't really matter at that time because you could count on another head, as we used to call each other, to give you a bit of whatever he was eating, drinking, smoking, or otherwise using for sustenance or pleasure. And we got there roughly the same time it took most folks to drive themselves there. Such was the curiosity and desire to meet these oddly happy, crazy kids with funny clothes and long hair on their way to the musical mecca that we could barely get out of one car when another would nearly screech to a halt, waiting till we ran and jumped in, all four of us laughing, piling in, and thanking them for stopping all at once. 
we really didn't have to tell them where we were going. From Detroit through Ontario, Canada, and back in to the U.S. at Buffalo, New York, throwing peace signs back in every parent's car that carried awestruck youngsters from 8 to 18. They wanted to be a part of this, whatever it was, that looked like big fun. It resembled an international caravan with no map or plan. We just followed the guy in front of us in the long, long, happy line of pickups, VWs, VW buses, old city buses, borrowed dance cars, and motorcycles. Everybody knew where we were going. And with each ride, we re-explained that there was a very large party this far out farmer, Yasger, was throwing in upstate New York. And shit, why don't you join us? Fuck work. This is a big, big blast, man. Very far out. I mean the doors. Santana, Country Joe the Fish, and Jimmy. Jimmy Hendrix is going to be here. It was on the radio, on TV, and in the newspapers. No internet then, but as always, we communicated just fine without it. Strange. Every party we went to for six months before the event, every head magazine, every head shop, every street corner, eventually even CBS, NBC, NBC, and all kinds of letters of the alphabet were announcing a potentially and historically proportional thing was going to take place. Max Yazger was being interviewed by the media. He was such a kindly and very different elder man that he would simply convey again and again that he just wanted to see us come together in celebration of our newfound peaceful way of living and sharing. He understood, and we loved him for it. A continuous road party from Detroit to New York, every rest stop, every gas station, nearly every car, it seemed, filled with cheap, wide, grass, smiling faces and vibes. Vibes that penetrated the steel of every vehicle and engulfed your body and made you feel like you did when you were 10 years old, ready to shout again and again, are we there yet? And every joint got you higher than the last, so you felt like you wanted to get out and run the rest of the goddamn way to be sure and catch the first load. Jesus. And then we pulled into Buffalo. It was dark, and we could hear kids yelling and cops shouting long before we turned the last corner for border inspections. The nervous young businessman that had brought us to that point saw there was trouble and dropped us off before we got to the checkpoint. What a miserable greeting was in store for us. It's our very own homeland. Cops were Billy clubbing young folks as they exited a travel bus, some for no apparent reason than for being on that bus. As kids panicked, the cops randomly struck and grabbed them and dragged them into the station there. Most kids were simply avoiding the violence. I saw not one person resisting. Most were just getting feel in an attempt to avoid the craziness. We watched them for about 30 yards away, deciding not to advance until things were subdued. Finally, like a saved pack of hyenas, the cops began simply rounding their little kids up, and we cautiously shuffled towards them. After much humiliation, but without any dumb provocation on our part, we were allowed to enter the city. We began hitchhiking a very safe distance away. All the while, we darted back books at the station in case the madness began to get it didn't. A 15 mile walk through a very stunned little town, and we heard the music long before we got the answers firm. First only in our heads, come on baby, light my fire, purple haze, you gotta change your evil ways. We're all outlaws in the eyes of America, in the eyes of America, in the eyes of America. That's it. Fun, lots of fun. That's right. All right. Tough stuff. Yeah, I love it, brother.